not guilty. Mr. Ru, is this in accordance with your instruction? That, that is indeed, sir. Thank you, my lady. Any explanation my of My lady, key? Mr. Oldwage will do the, uh, read the explanation into the record. Thank you very much. My lady, with the court's leave, I propose to hand up three original versions of the section 115 plea explanation, yes. which have been signed, as you will note, on the last page of the document by our client. We also favour the state with a copy of this very same document. Yes, please proceed. Yes, you may. If your ladyship's leave, might I then proceed to read it into the record? Yes. I'm indebted. In the High Court of South Africa, Gauteng Division Pretoria, case number CC113 forward slash 13. In the matter between the State and Oscar Leonard Carl Pistorius, the accused, explanation of plea in terms of section 115 of Act 51 of 1977. I, the undersigned Oscar Leonard Carl Pistorius, hereby furnish the following explanation of plea with reference to the charges to which I plead not guilty. Add count one, murder, read with the provisions of section 51, subsection one of Act 105 of 1977. Paragraph one, in its formulation of this count, the state has contended that I unlawfully and intentionally killed Reva Stienkam, herein after referred to as Reva. Paragraph two, this allegation is denied in the strongest terms. In fact, at the time of the tragic accident which led to Reva's death, we were in a loving relationship. Paragraph 3. Whilst I admit that I inflicted the fatal gunshot wounds to Reva, this occurrence was indeed an accident in that I had mistakenly believed that an intruder or intruders had entered my home and posed an imminent threat to Reva and me. Paragraph 4. In my application for bail, I concisely dealt with the events of 14 February 2013. I am advised that I will have an opportunity to deal with a comprehension version of the events when I testify. For purposes of my plea explanation, I emphasize the following. Paragraph 4.1. During the early hours of the morning, I brought two fans in from the balcony. I had shortly before spoken to Reva, who was in bed beside me. 4.2. Unbeknown to me, Reva must have gone to the toilet in the bathroom at the time when I brought the fans, brought in the fans, closed the sliding doors, and drew the blinds and the curtains. 4.3. I heard the bathroom window sliding open. I believe that an intruder or intruders had entered the bathroom through the bathroom window which was not fitted with burglar bars. 4.4. I approached the bathroom armed with my firearm so as to defend Reba and I. At that time, I believed Reba was still in the bed. 4.5. The discharging of my firearm was precipitated by a noise in the toilet, which I, in my fearful state, knowing that I was on my stumps, unable to run away or properly defend myself physically, believed to be the intruder or intruders coming out of the toilet to attack Reva and me. Paragraph 5. I respectfully, I respectfully believe that the state has no basis whatsoever for alleging that I wanted to take Reva's life. I will demonstrate hereunder that notwithstanding the fact that all the objective evidence will corroborate my version of the events, the state has embarked on a strategy to rely on unsubstantiated allegations in an endeavor to prove that I wanted to kill Reva. Paragraph 6. The strategy was also employed at my bail application. I will hereunder concisely deal with some of the material aspects to support my contention herein. Paragraph 7. At my bail application, the state inter alia contended that I deliberately shot Reva whilst I was positioned at a distance of about 1.5 meters from the toilet door and whilst I was standing on my prosthesis. The allegation with reference to 1.5 meters and me wearing my prosthesis was clearly designed to suggest that I had pursued Reva to the toilet and that I therefore knew that Reva was in the toilet, thus that I did not entertain any fear at a time when it is alleged that I entered the bathroom. Paragraph 8. 
The state is also, by means of the evidence of the then investigating officer, Hilton Boerta, sought to rely on a statement by a witness, who I am told is a certain Estelle van der Merwe, who claims to have heard between the applicant and the deceased, and the evidence might point in that way, unquote. This witness has since deposed to a further statement, which materially contradicts her first statement. In the further and better particulars, the state disavows reliance on the first statement. The state has also conceded, in the further and better particulars, that they are not aware of any of the detail regarding, in brackets, the alleged argument, and that it may become clear during the trial. Paragraph 10. Van der Merwe's house is located approximately 105 meters from my bedroom, with my bedroom and bathroom windows facing in the opposite direction to Van der Merwe's house. It would not have been possible for Van der Merwe to have heard anyone talking from my bedroom in their bedroom. The state is furthermore in possession of statements by a number of witnesses, including witnesses resident in either the estate where I reside or in an adjacent estate. None of these witnesses claim to have heard any argument between Riva and I, nor any woman's voice talking prior to the shooting, notwithstanding the fact that two of the witnesses, open brackets, who live in closer proximity to my house than Van der Merwe, close brackets, were awake at the time when Van der Merwe alleged that she had heard a woman's voice. Paragraph 11. I refer to the above, as the state now alleges and the further particulars provided that there was, in fact, an argument between Riva and I, and that I killed Riva, in quotes, because of the argument, unquote. I am unable to comprehend on what basis the state, brackets at the bail application, close brackets, could only rely on a possibility of an argument between Riva and I, and now, with even less available evidence, brackets, by disavowing Van der de Merwe's first statement, close brackets, alleged that there was in fact an argument and that I shot Riva, in quotes, because of the argument, unquote. Paragraph 12. I deny this allegation and reiterate that there is no justification, whether legally or factually, for this unfair and incorrect allegation to have been made. The aforesaid allegation is also not supported by any of the statements disclosed to me by the state. Paragraph 13. Furthermore, contrary to what was contended for by the state during the bail application, the state has now conceded that it cannot be contended as a fact that I was about 1.5 meters from the toilet door and that I had my prosthesis attached at the time when I discharged the firearm anymore. Paragraph 14. The unfair approach adopted by the state is further evident from the evidence given by Hilton Boerter at the bail application, whose evidence will be demonstrated to have been false in material respects. More particularly, that it was designed to falsely incriminate me on an allegation of premeditated murder. It will also be demonstrated during this trial that whilst Boerter was the investigating officer and tasked with preserving the scene, that the scene was contaminated, disturbed, and tampered with. This feature of the state's case will be dealt with when Boerta, amongst others, gives evidence. Paragraph 15. I have been led to understand that it is unusual to challenge the state's case in my plea explanation to the extent that I do herein. However, I am left with no alternative but to explain my innocence with reference to the allegations leveled against me. The foregoing will be exposed by having regard to the state's intended approach in this trial. This approach is to not only seek to unfairly draw inferences from purported statements of fact, which are not supported by the objective facts, but also by virtue of the statements disclosed to me by the state to seek to introduce inadmissible character evidence <laughs> under the guise that such inadmissible evidence would be admissible, similar fact evidence, to demonstrate 
that there was an alleged nexus between the brackets, inadmissible closed brackets, character evidence, and the brackets, non-existing closed brackets, argument, which allegedly led to me killing Riva, paragraph 16. I'm furthermore advised that, as the state is aware of the fact that it has no evidence to prove an alleged argument, and in particular in view of the fact that the state has conceded that it does not know what the features or import of such alleged argument would have been, the only intended purpose of an attempt to introduce inadmissible character evidence would be to engineer and bring about an inadmissible attempt at assassination of my character. I'm advised that during the conduct of the trial, my legal representatives will object to the introduction of such inadmissible character evidence on the basis as stated above. Paragraph 17. I respectfully state that no truthful evidence can ever be tendered that I fired the shots, and I quote, because of the argument, unquote. I deny this allegation in the strongest terms because there was no argument. Paragraph 18. The allegation that I wanted to shoot, in brackets, or kill, close brackets, the river, cannot be further from the truth. Add count two. Contraventions of section 120, subsection 7 of the Firearms Control Act number 60 of 2000. Alternatively, to count two, a contravention of section 120, subsection 3, sub sub paragraph B of the Firearms Control Act number 60 of 2000, and paragraph 19. The allegations as formulated in the, indi formulated in the indictment with reference to this count and the alternative count thereto are denied. Add count three. Contravention of section 120, subsection seven of the Firearms Control Act number 60 of 2000. The first alternative to count three, contravention of section 120, subsection three, sub sub paragraph A of the Firearms Control Act number 60 of 2000 as well as the second alternative to count three, the contravention of section 120, subsection 4, sub sub paragraph A of the Firearms Control Act number 60 of 2000, as per paragraph 20, I admit that whilst I was in possession of the firearm as alleged, a shot went off. Save as aforesaid, the remaining allegations as contained in this count are denied. Add count four. Contravention of section 90 of the Firearms Control Act number 60 of 2000 as contained in paragraph 21. I admit that at all times relevant to this count, I had not been issued with a license to possess .38 caliber rounds of ammunition. Save as aforesaid, the remaining allegations as contained in this count are denied. My lady and learned assessors, that then the plea explanation as envisaged in terms of section 115 of the Criminal Procedure Act, the statement before you with respect has been signed by my client. He will no doubt confirm that in due course on this very day, the 3rd of March, 2014. As your ladyship, please. Thank you very much. Mr. Pistorius, do you confirm the explanation as read out? I confirm, my lady. Thank you very much.